It was a new way of writing fantasy after Tolkien. You know, my whole generation, you know, kind of read C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien and were really in love with and obsessed with fantasy. But we realized that we did not have in us what they had in them. You know, we're not English. We don't go for long country walks. You know, we all kind of grew up in the suburbs and we're living in our 20s in bad neighborhoods in the cities. And we thought, you know, how do we kind of get that to go together with our passion for not only Tolkien, Tolkienian fantasy, but um, the pre-Raphaelite painters and Victorian stuff and Jane Austen and Georgette Hare and Man from Uncle. And, you know, it was we were kind of more interested in urban society than we were in, um, you know, the sort of great myths, and yet we loved the great myths. And somehow this came together into a whole bunch of writers of roughly the same age, at roughly the same time, some of whom knew each other, some of whom didn't, but all kind of wanted to write this kind of left field fantasy. And um, a reviewer named uh, Don Keller noticed this and wanted to write an article about us, and he couldn't figure out what to call it. And he wanted to call it something really dorky. And he was telling me about this, so I said, no way are you calling it that. Why don't you call it Fantasy of Manners, since it's kind of like a comedy of manners. What did he want to call it? He wanted to call it the Fourth Street Fantasy School, because there was a convention in Minneapolis with Emma Bull and Steve Bruce and uh, Pamela Dean and all those people that was called the Fourth Street Fantasy Con because it was on Fourth, Fourth Street, Street in Minneapolis around the corner from, oh God, what's the name of that club? We used to go to that club at like one in the morning after the con and dance. Anyway, you know, it was a lovely thought, but I, I said, you're not naming any lit my literary movement after a <laughs> science fiction convention. Thank you very much. So I said, what about calling it Fantasy of Manners? Because there is that element to everybody's of, um, you know, like a Jane Austen comedy of manners or an Oscar Wilde comedy of manners, that social stuff is as important as the magic. This was also the time, a time very much around cyberpunk when um, William Gibson was writing and the, Bruce Sterling and, and Bruce Sterling and, and they had coined the term um, cyberpunk, and therefore everybody who was writing something that was slightly different or slightly new got punked basically. Yeah. So. <laughs> Suddenly, we were manor punk. Yeah, it was and, comedy manners, and then it got or fantasy manners, and then it got turned into manor punk because yeah. somebody thought that was cute and funny. But really, a lot of what Tolkien and and C.S. Lewis and everybody else was writing about was the relationship of a human being um, or a group of human beings to to the ineffable, to God, to spirituality, to the larger huge spiritual world um, and to to the gods and the spirits and what we were really interested in as writers were was the relationship of a, a single individual to the society that he or she found himself living in and so that's what we were writing about and we wrote about it in a fantastic context because we were interested also in the overarching not necessarily spiritual but definitely magical um, context of that and besides which magic is fun but and it makes an extremely useful metaphor but it's also but really what what interested us was the people not the nuts and bolts of the magic and we weren't I was about to say we weren't into the, that into swords, which is like a total lie. <laughs> <laughs> but different swords, different swords from the the Tolkien kinds of swords. You know, not the heroic fantasy, and not the go out and have a quest and smash things swords. But and the mostly the fine swords. pointed swords. Yes, and the non magical swords in many cases. I also want to do a little side commercial here for this. When I was talking about this whole new way of looking at fantasy. Um, Terry created a shared world that all of us wrote in called Border Town, uh, which was in some ways, some people say, was the origin of urban fantasy that's so popular today, which is basically elves, mean elves on the modern streets. So um, Holly Black and I have just revived it, and it's coming out in May 2011 with um, half the original authors and half new people like Cory Doctorow, Neil Gaiman, um, and... Uh, Cassandra Clare, Holly Black. So here, woo, woo, beautiful. Oh, yes. So this was all, it's very exciting to me that, that a new generation, well, basically there's a whole generation that grew up with this stuff and is now writing rather wonderful and successful fantasy, and they owe it all to us. Not modest. <laughs>
this business, it doesn't pay to be modest. Well, there is such a thing as false modesty, and Helen does not believe in it. It's of no use to me. 